Hey guys, Brandy here for your new release Wednesday, week of August 23rd, and I am all by myself. Liz is out in Vegas doing things she can't talk about. No, just kidding. She's doing amazing things in Vegas. Her film is up for a bunch of awards out there, so we are wishing Liz the best. Good luck. Break lots of legs, especially if there's any inappropriate comments or anything coming at you from creepers in Vegas. Break lots of legs. But I, I love hearing myself talk. We all know this, but I can't do this alone, guys. So, um, hey, Patrick, Rob. What up, what up, what up, what up? Come on, then. Let's see if we can do this together. Yo, yo. I think I need the company. Internet. <laughs> oh, look, look. Suddenly my beauty has been eclipsed by these handsome gentlemen. Eclipse. Eclipse. You like Eclipse that? Eclipse fever all this week. Um, I, I slid that in there real yes. slick like. Yes. So, can we make this a thing now where you're talking and I walk in front of you and just keep going? <laughs> You've been eclipsed. There we go. That, this, that might throw up the camera. That's the thing. It As might it throw up. It refocuses and all that. So speaking of Eclipse, um, I know we had a conversation when I got home. You didn't get to see anything. Did well, you get to see the Eclipse I action? did get to see the Eclipse uh, a little bit through the clouds. We had a lot of cloud cover. Did you um, have those cool glasses? I did, but I gave it to my wife who went to <laughs> the, the, the area of totality down in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, um, that's Because awesome. I thought that my mother might need one because, you know, they, I needed one for my wife and my daughter. Mm -hmm. And then I thought my mom didn't have one. But apparently my mom, my mom and dad bought ones themselves. So I could have had it for myself. Good on mom. It's all good. Did you, so uh, what I did was I used uh, quite a few dark sunglasses that I had. But I didn't see her. I was okay. smart. I wasn't Trump. I was going to say, did I you put my it? camera up. I didn't trump it. Good. I Don't put my it. camera up. I looked briefly <laughs> up to make sure I was yeah. centered. And then Got it. looking at that, I would kind of focus and, you know, kind of like, like I'm doing right now, looking at awesome. you, not at the sun, <laughs> getting the camera focused, <laughs> recording. Yeah. So I'll throw my little clip in at oh, the no, end of the episode cool. so y'all can see what we saw from Fort Belvoir, Virginia. I actually did get to see it from the Quantico area. Mm. Um, I walked out during the moment of totality to go on my lunch break to get coffee because I was tired. And as I was walking out of Starbucks... This really nice guy is standing there with like a bunch of people. Nice. And everybody who was walking up, hey, do you want to get the glasses? Do you want to see the eclipse? I'm like, oh my God, hell yeah. Very so strange. I looked at it and it was right before all the cloud coverage kind of took yeah. over everything. So I got to see the eclipse. Pretty sweet. I'm very excited about that. Very spiritual very for you. Very spiritual for me. So um, speaking of spiritual moments, uh, moon moments. Moon moments. Let's, let's talk about something real quick. What are your... Favorite moon-based moments? Hmm, in pop culture? Yes. Okay. Um, well, for me, um, I was thinking immediately Moon Knight pops into mind because the moon is in the title. He's an, I, I, you know what, as a superhero, he, he's been cool. The time that I really got into him at one point was, I forgot the name, Stephen Platt. He had like this very Tom McFarlane type style. Mm -hmm. He was going, but I still, I never got about to reading it. So I'm going to pass over for Moon Knight. I know a lot of my friends, uh, like Mickey Holm, um, like uh, Moon Knight. He dresses up as Moon Knight as a cosplay. So I think he's cool as a, a, a as a character, but don't know too much on him. So I just did a fun year with him and gave him the split personalities because he is at some point a, a, yeah. a, a three split personalities in there, one of which a Marine veteran, but that doesn't make him a bad person. Um, and they were tied, David Mack covers, and he was splitting yes. between Captain America, Spider-Man, yeah. and Wolverine. He brought Echo in, which is a David Mack character mm -hmm. that we haven't seen that much of, which was really super fun. Uh, so you can get those two trades of Bendis and Alex Malik. Yeah, yes. it wasn't Matt Covers. I'm sorry. It was, it was all Alex Maleev stuff. Yes, Alex um, Maleev. Interesting character. Awesome. awesome. Fun stuff. So, Fun times. can't talk too much upon Moon Knight, so Except thank you for that. So, for those back people back. that want to check Just. out Moon Knight, um, for me, I, I'd have to go with the werewolf aspect of okay. the moon. And one of the scariest films that I saw as a kid um, was An American Werewolf in London. Yes. And, Ooh, oh my, my gosh. Face. It looks so real. The way he, when they would morph, oh my gosh. Okay, now keep in mind, guys, so this is like really, it's old, and we're kind of dating uh, ourselves. Yes, and 80s, the very The special 80s. effects were not the same as they are now. Hey, but, but at I would the time. Say, practical effects cool. over CGI. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't, didn't Bush do a song for that one? Or was that the no, other No, that was the remake. There yeah. was a remake, remake, and they did like. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was a different. But Mouth. Yeah. yeah. By Bush. Yes. Which totally doesn't but sound dirty out of Very sexual in nature, too. Back then, you could really get away with a lot of stuff. 
in a rated R? Was it even PG-13? It probably was, because I remember watching things like What About Bob, and they were like dropping F-bombs. Oh my gosh. So, I think Tom Savini was on the effects, and you know him from uh, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, or actually more so Dawn of the Dead. Um, but they, the person that actually also did those effects did the Thriller um, oh, yes. music video. Michael Jackson, greatest pop singer of all time. Um, but those effects, and then when you saw Michael Morph at the end, yeah, spoiler to Thriller, if you've never seen Thriller, but who hasn't seen Thriller, it's yeah. a Halloween tradition. But when Pretty he much. morphs into a werewolf mm -hmm. in the, uh, actually it's not in the ending of it, it's in the beginning of the film. Yeah, um, because they're at a movie theater before right. they actually walk, because then he becomes a zombie. Mm -hmm. But, oh my gosh, just the yellow eyes from the contact lenses and just, you know, they would, Terrifying. there was just somebody off site to pump to make the faces yeah. bulge. Mm -hmm. That was so cool as a, to, you know, learning as an actor, as a filmmaker, special effects yeah. on screen. So, American Werewolf in London, okay. that's my moon base stuff right there. What about yours? Um, so I've got two, and uh, Amazon Prime has the latest Tick series that's coming out. The pilot's on there. It's kind of dark, but I'm really happy to see yes. that they're like, I've been starting to see more commercials. So I guess the live action Tick series was picked up. Okay. But if you remember I haven't seen the that cartoon. Yes, the cartoon was uh, awesome too. Which has the live action one too. Um, yeah. Amazing Dan, yeah. the, the, the ska inspired theme song that yeah. was just like my roommates and I would play that in college and stop what we're doing at that one point where it was all ah! we would all do like a big old arm circle well if we all remember <laughs> the first episode Chairface Chippendale it's his birthday so some a-hole decides he's going to carve his name on the moon and it gets as far as C-H and I would say 73% of the letter A carved into the moon and for the remainder two episodes or two series yeah two seasons mm -hmm. You had Cha just on the moon, <laughs> like with no context, which was awesome. We we're planning the segment, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll talk about the I Heroes was TV series." From, from but the I so like chair face. the NBC Heroes series. Don't get me wrong; it's a great opportunity to see such a wonderful group of actors do horrible acting, um, and then they recycled the the first season for the second season, and the third season, and the fourth season, and the reboot, and the comic book, and everything else like that. So I'd rather go with the Cha. In the moon, uh, runner up, definitely goodbye, moon man, sung by Jermaine Clement on the second <laughs> season of yeah. Rick and Morty. Which just it doesn't make any sense, but I guess Rick and Morty's really smart, you don't know what you're talking about, so just enjoy it, kind of thing. So, true fact, shout out again to Jermaine Clement, he is fantastic. Yeah. I just oh my god, uh, what, what other movie was he in? He well, he, he did the did crab Moana. song in Moana, Moana. he does yeah. Moana. If I were it, he was a crab in Moana, if exactly. I were red and Jamaican. You would have a problem with my. He's just one of those kind of so funny yeah. actor characters. He's a great character actor. Yes. Um. So my favorite. <clears throat> I'm gonna go. Twilight. Go, oh, <laughs> can I punch you? There's no steel wool in this house. No. Let's not talk about Twilight. I don't know. Scared my eyes. I just wanted to put the Twilight joke in oh there. Oh my god. And and it was the too. most. And it no. was the most. And it was the, like yeah. I, I. We were at a fob in Iraq with the first goddamn book, and I read it because there was nothing to fucking do. Wow. But sweat on your rack, and like the way that woman writes. I was writing better at nine, and I was not writing well at nine, but I didn't make a billion dollars from it. Well, at nine, I really like Looney Tunes, and I like Marvin the Martian, and that's sort of Moony. Um, but really, if yes, you want to go Moony, that was a great um, I have to go I Sailor believe. Moon. Uh, Sailor Moon. Because she's Sailor fighting evil by moonlight, and I love her, and it's childhood, sure. it's revamped childhood. It's really costumes. I, I love know. the costumes. I, How many I do too. I've made lots of them. How many conventions have you gone to and done the, the sailors? Um, I've done... Cosplayed as a sailor person. Sorry. I've done at least... Done the sailor sounds different. Hey, hey, oh, oh, I'm married to a marine hey, sailor. Hey, um, hey, Navy over here. That's ah, okay. That's how we roll. That's I've done we. two variants of Sailor Mercury. Shots I'm doing sailors. two variants of Sailor... Uranus. <laughs> that was we knew scary. that was happening. We knew it. Look, guys, I've just been eclipsed. So let's go ahead and move on. Oh, yeah. Because I think. That was good. I, we I got a lot more show to do. We're going to make this a thing. We have spent a lot of time talking about silly shit. Let's move on. Let's do something cool. I'm going to keep it galactic. Okay. How do you like that transition? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
out this week, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, one of my favorite films of all Marvel comics that they've done. This is probably one of the best. The sequels, they've been doing the Galaxy Winter stuff, Soldier like, and that James are, are, are just spot on. Killing it. Yeah. Out this week. Um, and for those uh, DVD, Blu-ray files, do you actually still buy it? Because, you know, some no. people just do the digital stuff. You're digital people now. Yeah. We go see it or we don't see it. So <laughs> for those DVD hunters, I'm one of those people that, you know, Best Buy, Target, Amazon. Um, the Target version includes extra bonus digital content. So for you digital That's people. Cool. So get this. Best Buy only does the steelbook. So Target is a place if you want more uh, actual content. Who cares about the steelbook? I want content. We like content. Does it come content. with an authentic raccoon? doesn't come with raccoon. No. No. Wonder Woman is coming Oh, out advanced news. Era. Yes. You brought up the Wonder Woman. Walmart version of the Blu-ray will come with the tiara. That's pretty cool. To okay, me, I need this now. I would in want the life. Walmart version. That's where I'm going to get my version. So, um, Goddamn princess. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 out this going to give us money for us pushing Walmart. And <laughs> also, if you are a Telltale fan, like my buddy over here, yeah. um, we'll have some images on our new release Wednesday Facebook page of the new Batman Episode 3. Two. 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 We'll have that up there. Very excited. Check that out. But they also are doing the Guardians of the Galaxy game. Oh, so yes. here is the trailer for the latest installment of the episode. Check it out right here. Ta-da. Let's figure out why the Forge brought us here before things get even more weird. So close, Peter. This place, it seems to be using our memories against us. Nebula, you may yet be the greatest assassin in the galaxy. I know you think you want this, but once you've taken a life, there's no going back. That was my kill and you took it from me! Something tells me you still don't get it. Enlighten me. You took everything from me. Everything! Why would I destroy the Forge? This thing sounds awesome! Destroying the Forge is the only way we can keep it from hurting people. The Forge can bring my family back, if you choose to use it. Guys, we got company! This falls into the wrong hands, the whole galaxy is screwed. It's left, Peter. You want your left. No! It's right to empower you, idiot! Everyone wants this power, and no one should have it. My top three picks of the weeks, guys, coming at you right now. I think they're pretty good. First one up is going to be Lady Death, Merciless Onslaught, number one, written by Brian Polito and art is by uh, Darren Verma. So, kind of giving us a little throwback to last week, all that damn Nazi talk. Uh, a rogue Nazi scientist kidnaps the last innocent in hell, and this kid may or may not be the key to this Nazi's master plan. How are they going to defeat the Reich? Well, because Lady Death... Haxon and Hellrider are going to come to the rescue, and it's just, guys, I think this is just perfectly timed. Um, not to mention, Brian Polito is an awesome human being. I've met him at conventions. He is a great writer. The art on this thing is going to be fantastic, and, you know, I will always give you that strong female character, and who is stronger or more badass than Lady Death? She's just, she rocks. So that's my first pick. My second pick is a little different, where I was gonna give you something different. So, let's see how I can say this. It's Cthulhu for kids. What? No, really, it's Cthulhu for kids. It is called Call of Cthulhu, Kala, as in the name, C-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A. So there's a young girl, her name is Kala Tafali, and she is right now in between college and summer jobs and trying to make life work and battling, you know, dark lord monsters and human assassins. Oh yeah, and her uncle who happens to be known as the king in yellow. I mean, what's what's not normal about any of that? So this chick, poor girl, spending her summer trying not to fall into the family business and also trying not to let the dark lord free. Hail Cthulhu, really, yeah. 
Uh, I think it's going to be fun. <laughs> Don't let it make you go crazy. And then my last pick. Guys, I don't know how many of you have ever noticed this. I wear my hair more sore every week. It's Mjolnir. No, this is not standing for white power because fuck a bunch of that. This is truly for my love of Norse history and Thor. And usually, usually I let Liz take all of Thor picks for the week because I know how much she loves Loki and Liz, I love you. Not this week, bitch, you gone? <laughs> I got it, I got it, I'm holding down the fort. So my top pick, my last pick, my number three pick for the day is Generations Unworthy Thor and Mighty Thor number one, written by Jason Aaron, art by uh, Mahmoud Azrar, Oh my god, guys. So this is going to be really cool. So Jason Aaron has been writing this for a while. Jason Aaron, who we speak odes of. Jason Aaron, who has the glorious beard. Jason Aaron, who we just, we can't get enough of. Has been writing this for a while now. Um, basically, he has written Thor. She has gone to ancient Egypt. She is now facing a young Odin son. So you have these two uh, iterations of Thor coming together, battling, but then realizing that there is a bigger evil when they find a group of wayward Vikings. They realize that one person doing this is not going to be enough, and now they are fighting Apocalypse. That's right, Apocalypse, who, as my husband reminds me of, because anytime I talk about comics, he's like the Encyclopedia Britannica of comics, and I'll say, hey, here's a character, and he likes to give me the whole rundown, which is awesome. I am never lacking for information, which, guys, get you, get you a guy who, who knows his shit. Seriously, well worth your time. So, Namor, whom I love because he's a snarky bastard and guaranteed, I know you're going to say he's an Aquarius, but honestly, I think he's a Leo because he's cocky as shit, and I love me a Leo. Hi, honey. Um, so Namor was the original first mutant, but now Apocalypse has been retconned as the first mutant, and our Thor, and who is worthy, our Thor, who is unworthy, are going to have to team up to fight Apocalypse. So who is going to win this battle? The unworthy and the lost in time heroes, or this ultimate evil power? Guys, I mean, I know who my, my hammer's on. So those are my top three. What is my generation's story about? I've been writing Thor for four years now. I've written a lot of different versions of Thor. The current one, the one for the last couple years, has been Jane Foster, who Jane Foster has a long history with Thor. We still managed to put her together with a version of Thor she's never met before. And she meets a young Thor who's not yet been able to pick up that hammer for the first time. So the two of them get together. They're, it involves a Vikings, ancient Egypt, and the X-Men villain Apocalypse. So we are big Game of Thrones fans. We have been watching since the beginning. I do have the first four books, although I very self-admittedly have not sat down to read them. Not that I don't want to, but there's just a lot going on in my life. Uh, but we kind of have to talk about this because... It's, it's a become dry an week. issue. It's, it's become an issue. I heard incest. Uh, well, there's always going to be incest because that's really the way that Game of Thrones is started. Are they said no. Danny and John. Possibly, She's maybe. His aunt. She's his aunt. She, I, uh, <laughs> but you know, I ship them harder than I ship the Lannisters. Um, <laughs> however, what we do want to talk about right now is the difference in scripting and pacing since they have departed from the books. As you know, George R. R. Martin kind of drags his ass on writing. He will stop, he'll do other things, he comes back, he writes Dude, a little bit it's more. It's as big as it is, and I'm sure all he can do is drag it. <laughs> uh, true. <coughs> but Write more. At some point, they wound up, the producers, had to sit down with him and say, look, we need to keep the show going, and they had the discussion of how he was going to end it all. That being said, I feel like they have sort of started pushing this to really quickly wrap everything up. Instead of doing an extended final season, 
They've done this shortened season seven, and then they're going to do a shortened season eight. And what they are doing now is just... It's, 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 it's crazy. It. They're, they're exploring entire story arcs in a single episode. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the fight at season or episode four against where, where Danny's riding the dragons to fight Jamie mm -hmm. Lannister and it's it's strange to not see these building up and then with this latest episode one minute you know John and Snow Patrol are on the island and then you know they they send the runner but drop your hammer you'll run faster without your hammer and then somehow you know he gets back, collapses, and Danny gets a raven, and then they make their way, and in the meantime, they're yeah. just hanging out, like, just staring in the middle of the I mean, of Jesus Christ, and... poor Gendry was rowing into fucking oblivion for the longest time, and now he runs back, and all he has to realize now is that if he just had a raven, he if he had, had a time. raven, he found it there would time. have been, like, this, like, hole <clears throat> to jump through, and suddenly time and space have gone, and things happen like this. If you look at the map of Westeros... Just, just, and maybe Patrick can find the map of Westeros and post it right here, like this map where you see the north, and then you see above the wall, and then you see Dragonstone down here, and he's got to run all the way, and then down and back, and like, really, this makes absolutely no sense. They are pushing the realm of, of sensical shit. At this point, I am following because I am invested, I am hooked. And I need to know what's going on, but oh my god! There's there's definitely a lot of beautiful uh, uh, symbolism, and I think the trailer starts out the the coolest note that I've heard is that in the first episode or with the trailer for the series when Cersei is talking to Jaime about how the war where the war is going to go. Yeah. She's standing on what's called the neck. Yes. And Jaime is standing by a string of islands called the fingers. So the whole thing from the, the thing has been that Jamie is going to choke, uh, is going to strangle his sister. So, I mean, that small detail is really cool. Mm. I just, uh, the, yeah. the pacing, they introduce a conflict and they settle it within an episode. And we haven't That's had crazy. that. And it's one of those things that like, you still want to cheer this, the stuff on. Yeah. But it's like, this is $3 million fan fiction. And it feels so rushed. I yeah. mean, granted, it's it's a lot of money to have dragons come through. So when we first saw the dragons, you know, blasting the shit out of the Lannister armies um, after they had finished taking over uh, Elena's uh, home, it just, I mean, that was awesome. But every episode since then has just moved faster and faster and faster. And now, giant spoiler, guys, giant spoiler. With the Night King having his own dragon, right. I'm really curious as to how fast shit is just going to go downhill. If you were a dragon, would you... Patrice. Patrice. Would you want to breathe fire? Or ice. Because fire... Fire melts ice. Fire can burn things. Oh yes, fire can burn things. But ice, but ice, ice, ice can, can freeze things. There you go. There you I'm go. sorry. This is one, it's of my, late. one of my groomsmen. It's this was Patrice Logic, Best a decade and a half ago, friends. paying off for him a decade and a half later. So, We're thinking of you, Patrice. We are thinking of you. So guys, share with us what do you think of this season so far? How do you feel the pacing has been? What do you think about character development or lack of how these events have sprung up and gone down? Share this in the comments below. This is the last week that the bar is set up in DC. Oh, yeah, guys. Has anyone spent the three and a half hours waiting to in go line check it out? to go get a drink? Have y'all gone yet? Nope. Fuck no. <laughs> three and a half hours. No, thank you. I'm an alcoholic with a bar 10 feet walk away in the basement. Boom. I can get all the nice Dungeons and Dragons glassware going. You can and make I'll, me a Moscow mule. I'll, I'll call it, a, what's, a, what's a good Game of Thrones name for a drink? Serious. I'll, I'll call it a Viserys. It's just going to be rubbing He's alcohol sure. and fucking bitters. Aww. I'll join you there. Hey. Yeah, buddy. What's going on, y'all? This is Patrick, and here are my picks for August 23rd. I'm going to follow in the paths of uh, Brandy and a little bit of Rob. Shout out to our, our gal we miss and we love, but hopefully she's racking up the awards right now in Las Vegas. <laughs> My third pick out the gate is Generations, The Unworthy Thor and The Mighty Thor, number one 
they've already said enough about it. But again, shout out to Jason Aaron. You're killing it. I, um, I would say NRW owes you, you owe NRW a big check because we've been giving you a lot of love. But you're killing it. Ah. Um, but again, I'm loving this. And the reason why I picked this as well, not only because of Liz and Brandy and our love for Thor, is it's also uh, on that path to the Marvel legacy that they're getting ready to drop. The whole big Marvel renumbering. Um, I shouted out Generations Hulk previously where they brought Totally Awesome Hulk and the previous Hulk, the Banner Hulk together. And now we're seeing Unworthy Thor and the current Thor come together. So I'm excited about it. Can't wait to read that. Next up, Josie and the Pussycats number nine. Uh, written by Marguerite Bennett and Cameron Dordio, with art by Kelsey Shannon and Audrey Mock. I'm sad to say this is the last issue of the series, and I'm so sad because I actually really dig this. Me and my daughter read this book. I love it. The trade came out. Check it out if you haven't checked it out yet. It's a great book, and so I'm only hoping that they're taking a pause at the end of this issue number nine because I know that uh, now that Archie has his own band within the universe, they're coming out with a book called The Archie's. So we'll be seeing that as well as the Churches band, the actual real band called the Churches, will be appearing in the uh, Archie comic as a standalone book. So I'm thinking they're just taking a pause to bring out these other titles. But we want more Josie and the Pussycats. They're really doing a great job with this rebirth, this whole new version of it. So come on, bring it back. So Josie and Pussycats number nine ends off this current run. Um, they'll probably collect it into a trade. So check out the stunning finale to Faster Pussycats Drift Drift. It's a great storyline. It's a great book. Please check it out because we want more Josie and the Pussy, pussy Cats. Meow. Let me put that all together. Hard, hard I almost, time to stop that sentence. Meow. I know. And for my top pick, y'all know I'm a Valiant fan. Valiant Entertainment has always been killing it. It's one of the big companies that if you haven't been checking out, you need to check it out because they're doing comic book universes right. They are dropping 4001 AD, War Mother Number 1. It is the 41st century... New Japan is floating out in the galaxy, and while the Earth is all desolated, the survivors are trying to survive, and you have this one woman, the warm mother, going out there collecting what she can to help keep people alive, the rest of the survivors. She has a sentient rifle by her side to take out these bad guys that are trying to stop these people. So um, it introduces a new hero, hero into the universe. You know, Valiant has been playing around with the universe, and now we're getting this new war mother. It's going to be amazing. Fred Van Lente, who is just simply phenomenal, who's done a lot of great work. He most recently with Valiant did Generation Zero, and he's working with uh, upcoming star Tomas Giorello, who was working on Conan. So good Woo material there, good stuff, great picks. Hope you dig it. Check it out, y'all. his supporting guys. Well, you know, I... Okay, the let's, CEOs are not in this. Oh, they're at a convenient yeah. vacation. Good. Good. Let's yes. not talk about right. Danny Bland. I don't... I totally ah! talk about Danny Bland. So perfect. Um, uh, perfect. Spot on. But what we can talk about is what we've seen so far. So, Patrick, I think you said you've seen it through episode three? Three. First three episodes. We've gone through the first six episodes. Sorry Twice. we haven't finished it, guys. We have lives outside of this, and we're also old, and we fall asleep on the couch. Aren't there only like eight episodes only? Yeah, on this one? so we're so almost, almost there. Done. We're almost okay. there. Yep, I'll um, probably finish up some tonight yeah. if I can stay awake. But I mean, this this so far has been pretty interesting. We were having the discussion. You said we're saying that you know all these characters that are coming back. It's nice to see all the supporting cast uh, make it back. I don't know if Frank Castle. Makes it by the end of the series, but they keep tying in mm. the trailer for his series, which comes out in November around the same time 
that another particular Marvel character has a release. And I think Justice League is this November? There's a lot coming out this year. Before yeah. the end of the year, we are going to Mar have a Marvel's going to own shit. the shit out of November 2017. Yes. Uh, that's just, that, that's wild. But it's neat to see Foggy, mm -hmm. and it's neat to see everybody else not named Foggy. Karen, uh, <laughs> what did you uh, think of the first interaction with Cage and Foggy? It's fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, Cage, they, they, yeah, he's got an origin story that goes through his time in prison. Yeah. At the end of his series, he's back in prison. So for him to talk to a lawyer about everything. Yeah. Neat interaction, neat setup. I love yeah. at the end, you know, my friends call me Foggy. Like, I was getting ready to say that. You let them call you that? Like, that, that was, was my favorite moment of that exchange. A little harsh, like, but that was still. <laughs> it was so awesome. Because cool. yeah. seriously, that would have been what something I would have said. You let oh, people yeah. call you that? And I mean, I think it's really cool because I know when we first talked about the trailer and we were watching going, they look like they are so disconnected, yep. so disjointed. And truly, in the beginning, they are. Mm -hmm. But I think what they showed us for that trailer versus what we actually get to see provides an entirely different story. As always, guys, context is key, mm -hmm. yep. super important. And um, I, I like the interactions. I'm still not super thrilled with Danny Bland. Yes. Because he's boring. However, I also have to say uh, some of his supporting cast has also started to disappoint me in this. I don't think that she's been written as Colleen well. Colleen. Colleen. Colleen has not been written as well for yeah. this as she was in uh, Iron Fist. But I also uh, feel like there are some other characters who are so, just so. as strong. Then I'm going to bring it then to uh, favorite moments this far. Hallway fight. Favorite moment, okay. Yeah. And, and then least favorites. So okay. favorite um, moment, well, we'll stay on favorite. So hallway sure, fight. I'm, sure, 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 sure. So the, the first talk, hallway fight when they're yeah. coming out of the court. What we saw in the trailer and Got how it. they go to the HQ. Yes. And I think it's neat because at that point, Danny and Luke have like met, didn't get along. So they're there together. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel as forced no. as everything from the trailer made the relationship yeah. Field forced. Okay. Um, I thought everyone's reasons for being there were pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, you know, although I, when I, I was watching it, maybe after they see it again, Luke Cage kind of came out of nowhere for me. A little bit. Like all of a sudden he's there in the same building. Like that kind of, I got lost there. Yeah. But I was also half tired too. Yeah. I but all I remember it. is they were, you know. Iron Fist, Danny Blaine was going to stay now forever because he Danny sucked. Bland. If they're, uh, so I'll give my least favorite out the way. Shandy sure. fucking bland. He's a terrible. Well, so he's, yeah, he, it's it's he in the, the, on the, the in the but then all of a sudden that he came and showed up to mm -hmm. help. I was lost there. Yeah. So I'll have to check that again. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. I, I I went out of turn. On favorite moment. Uh, yeah. Sorry. And Boys, so, I gotta keep him in line. My favorite moment was actually not a moment specifically in the show. It was a personal epiphany when I realized that they would have a color scheme going on depending on what character was on screen. So if you haven't noticed this yet, I brought it up and Rob noticed it after I said something. Anytime Daredevil is gonna be on screen, you're gonna see red lights in the background. You're gonna see red items on screen. Anytime Luke Cage red is on scene, you're gonna have red, uh, yellow leaves in the background. There's yellow paper up on a billboard yellow, out yeah. in a park. There's yellow candles on top of a car. Anytime you see Jessica Jones, it is always blue undertones, blue light, a blue lamp on her desk, a blue folder on her pa on her desk. desk. And Easter anytime eggs. you see uh, Bland, there's greens in the background. Ping of regret. Yeah, you also, yes, you see, so you see a ping of regret. But that was the coolest thing for me because wow. as, as somebody, okay, I'm not as a big fan of director as some other people, but my background is theater. Yes. And so when I'm looking at a whole picture of something, I, yes. I like picking up those background yes. bits, those little hints of stuff that you wouldn't get right off the bat. But as soon as I saw that and we went back and watched an episode or two, and it all kind of came at me, I was like, oh shit, this is actually really fucking cool that they would do yeah. that because it's <clears throat> subtle enough that you don't always get it. But then I was looking at a scene in which... Um, Jessica is getting ready to fight somebody, but there was reds in the background. I was like, why is there red and blue? This is after I made the mm -hmm. epiphany. Well, motherfuckers, cause Daredevil, two seconds in, he was like, shit, I'm gonna come help you fight. I was like, oh, that makes sense. So it's cool. It's sort of 
foreshadowing. It gives you some context without having it be in your face. And that was my favorite moment. Just my, okay. my, I like that. Super I did cool. little Easter egg type stuff. Like, so, so now I'm going to see that. You're going to go back I, and watch you, it. It changed you'll, my you'll never, vision you'll, of everything. You'll never unsee it. So you won't either. Cool. Watch. I like that. I like the hallway scene, but I have to say, um, my favorite moment of which I'll get to in a, a half second. I'm going to keep you waiting for a second. I was very upset with Danny Bland, Iron Fist. So I was very nervous about this Defender series. Yeah. So I have to say they, they brought it back to where they've been good again. Yeah. Still not as good, I would say. To me, my favorite this far has been the Luke Cage, and I actually saw all of Luke Cage. Um, Daredevil has seen bits and pieces, and that's all of them, right? Oh, and Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. I've seen the majority of Jessica Jones. I think I had like three episodes left on Jessica yeah. Jones. And I really enjoyed Jessica Jones as well. So um, I, I, I'm digging what they're doing. They, they have their machismo back. So mm-hmm. that, that I will say. So favorite okay. moment and also kind of a throwback to some of the other series. I have to say outside of all the superhero stuff, which we love, mm-hmm. but it's also character building and it's seeing these lives of these characters. Okay. Is uh, Luke Cage fresh out of jail? Oh, one, another sidebar thing besides the Danny Bland stuff that I dislike. Why does all, when Luke Cage always on screen always have to have a soundtrack? It just, it just seems we, very it, stereotypical. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, no, I was going to say because he's getting out of cars half the time. No, he's not. He's no. walking through prison. He's he's uh, not. They're not doing that with all the other characters. No, so I it's felt what kind they of... did during Luke Cage in mm. his own series, and maybe it, they're just trying to pull from that. But I... it does feel a little forced, disjointed. Exactly. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's bothering me. Yeah. I enjoyed it there, but it just mm-hmm. the, why if you're not doing it for everybody else. It makes it so mm-hmm. disjointed and obvious. Right? Yeah. So, um, but with that being said, throwing back to some of the old is Cage fresh out of jail, seeing uh, the night nurse Rosario Dawson. Oh, if y'all know, I love Rosario as well. He Shout out to Rosario Dawson. His... Is um, him getting his coffee for the first time. Make a wish booty calls. My brother getting it's his like, coffee. So the that moment on the table. Shout out coffee. to Luke Cage. Is a euphemism. Getting that nice fresh cup of warm coffee. Is my favorite. I, I, <laughs> what I would I'm debate sorry. is uh, ask him. ask all your all your boyfriends and girlfriends who've never seen the build up series mm-hmm. if by watching Defenders in itself if it makes sense, and that's that's because we sit here and you know we the the shared universe thing is awesome. I'll tell you six episodes in, I haven't heard him mention the Avengers once. No, I have not heard anything about Stark Attack yeah. or, or any of that, mm-hmm. which is cool. It doesn't have to have that. Mm-hmm. Um, I would be curious. How much of the series makes sense if you haven't watched the other five seasons? Mm-hmm. So if you've got anybody that you're watching with that can get into the story and they're not feeling lost and they're not feeling confused with it, mm-hmm. let us know because if that's something that we can push out and be like, you don't have to commit 60 yeah. hours of your life to get caught up to this point, then that's something that should be out there for the masses because this is mass entertainment at this point. Also, shout out to uh, Sigourney Weaver. Oh, yeah. Who I am really thoroughly enjoying as a villain. Um, I like the way she's shown up so far. I like the way she's grown. I'm not gonna say anything else for those of you who haven't seen it, because unlike some of you assholes on the internet, I'm not gonna give too many spoilers, especially not without sharing that with you first. Spoiler, spoiler. Um, I really, I, I'm, I'm kind of digging her as a villain. Um, what was the Simon Pegg movie where he voiced an alien? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But it was the name remember. of the... No. Sigourney Weaver was the bad yeah. guy in that yeah. one. She's yeah. revealed as the big bad. That's Paul. My, Paul. Paul. Thank you very much. Paul's my favorite Sigourney Weaver as a villain. <laughs> but this one is... I just like Sigourney Weaver. I think she's a badass. I think for her age, especially, because, you know, she's oh, been God around for her. a long time. Yeah. From what she has done in the beginning... She fought she, aliens, man. She fought fucking aliens. She has not backed down... Um, she has not let anybody dictate what kind of role she will and won't take... Because a lot of women, when they get older, are forced into these roles where it's... I don't mind the Golden Girls, but I mean, it's it's these Golden Girls type roles. Like, oh, ha, ha it's so funny. And again, I, I will say, like, Dame Judi Dench takes a lot of those roles. But then she also does a lot of really amazing, serious roles, some badass roles. So I, I'm thoroughly appreciative of the fact that Sigourney Weaver is able to come in and do another role where she is not, like, rolling over or dying. She's... Fucking killing it. So. But best Sigourney ever role is Ripley. Oh you God, know. yeah. Without a doubt. Forever. There, I just had to say that. There's, there's, there's no way yeah. around that. Absolutely All right. iconic. Mm-hmm. All right. So guys, check out Defenders. It's good. Hashtag defend. 
Light workers are those who volunteered before birth to help the planet and its population heal from the effects of fear. Each light worker is here for a sacred purpose. Very often, however, life on Earth with its material focus creates a form of amnesia in a light worker. They then forget their divine and perfect identities and also their abilities to miraculously help the Earth and all living creatures. When light workers forget their true identity and purpose, they feel lost and afraid. I am that light worker. I've been having this dream about a man named Ananias and his wife, Ema. Clearly, you've buried something deep inside of you that's trying to resurface. Oh, hi. Are you okay? I have dreamed of this for so long, of like, you know, how you would look and... Get some sleep. <laughs> but there are things that we need to discuss, Ananias. Since meeting her, I know words and languages that haven't been spoken in over 2,000 years. I know mathematical equations that have never been taught to me, but somehow I know like it's second nature. Maybe this is all happening to me because I'm supposed to fulfill some kind of higher calling. I am in your mind. I'm in your heart. I am a part of you. And I'm gonna recommend Generations Unworthy, Thor and Mighty Thor, because Liz isn't here. No, I'm not, but it's a great book. You should read it anyway, and Liz, we miss you. Um, my first pick, Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man 3 by Chip Zdarsky and Adam Kubert. Chip has introduced the Tinkerer's friendly brother, the Finkerer, I guess, uh, but more or less what the Tinkerer does, and, and we all saw the Spider-Man Homecoming, how he's coming up with all the tech for sale for bad guys. Now you got it, one guy who's doing it for the good guys. So Chip has had fun tying in uh, a whole bunch of other tech-related superheroes to Spider-Man. It's been a lot of fun, and now apparently the setup is that the Kingpin is somehow involved. So what makes this Spider-Man book stand out is Zdarsky's dialogue. And again, when he did Howard the Duck, he had the inconsolable Spider-Man show up at least five times in 12 issues. And in the first episode, or the first issue of uh, this one, he ends up with someone's playing a, a Marvel game. And how does he Easter egg in Spider-Man crying in the game itself that this kid is holding in front of Spider-Man in costume? Oh, help me, Thor. Boo-hoo-hoo, boo-hoo-hoo. And he incorporated in the inconsolable Spider-Man, which is just spot on perfect. Um... I don't, I didn't see if there was a backup story. Chip's already done one with uh, Goran Parlov. Parlov, excuse me. Um, so, it's a fun book. Go pick it up. Chip deserves the money. And of course, the Cooper Brothers, you know you're going to get quality art with it. Shirtless Bear hyphen Fighter number three. And I've got the whole team here. Hang on. Jody LaHoop, Sebastian Gurner, art by Mike Spencer, Neil Vendrell. When you think of bears, with modern day commercials, you're either going to think of only you can prevent forest fires because you're old, um, or the toilet paper commercial, oh my God, we gotta go home because my toilet paper ain't gonna be enough to clean my bare ass, no pun intended. Well, like this series is all about puns, so this one ties in, like, you see the background panels of bears wiping their ass on America, and will you stand for that kind of bearer? And of course not, but with this, issue from everything that I've gleaned from the, the lead up to it is that there's actually the company that runs these these toilet paper brands are the big bad guys so like shirtless bear fighter the second issue is coming out for its second printing this week as well it's fucking hysterical go pick it up I'm the guy who told you to go read dog welder because you should go read dog welder so Garth Ennis and Russ Braun and John McRae can go retire and live on a throne of money, you should do the exact same thing for Shirtless Bear Fighter 3 so that all parties involved can go retire on a castle of money. All right, my third pick, Harley Quinn 26 by Jimmy Palmiotti, Amanda Connor with a backup story written by uh, Paul Dini and Jimmy Palmiotti, and the arts, uh, Bert Blevins, uh, J Bone, he's only written J, the initial Bone, so hi, Justin, Jerome, Josephine, Bone, uh, and art, uh, third art, John Timms. 
this this is not the Jimmy and Amanda's 26th issue of, of Harley Quinn. It's probably like the 50th, 60th. They did a rebirth. They had to renumber it. It's clearly a labor of love for these guys, and they write it in such a way to keep it unpredictable because they think a predictable story is trash. And it's clear the labor of love that they put into it. Uh, Harley has gotten along with the mayor, and now the setup for this. She lives up in Coney Island. Now the setup is that there's going to be a divide between them. So, candidly, it's crafted by them. You can feel Amanda Connor's influence with the storytelling writing, with the, the, the sense of just unabashed, unapologetic, fun, bobbly head humor that goes with it. And I think that just the team plays off well together. The backup stories, uh, for everybody that missed the Joker and Harley Quinn's relationship, um, they've been telling a backup story with Harley trying to set up a, a hideaway place for Joker that he could have his own lair and she's been stealing millions of dollars to get it set up. It's a clear labor of love and instead of Joker reeling back and smacking her across the face, he's reeling back, stop, stopping himself and kissing her on the forehead. Harley and Joker have never been hashtag relationship goals, but you've got the deranged jackasses that buy the Hot Topic stuff and that's it and think that they are. This series actually lends a little bit of credibility to that, so I highly encourage and recommend it. Those are my top three. You have yourselves a wonderful 23 August. That's our show for the week, guys. It's been fun hanging out. I am sorry to say that in the next two weeks, I'm not going to be here. I've got Dragon Con. But I'll be hanging out with Liz, and we'll hopefully be bringing you some amazing content from probably one of the most fun conventions of my year. I look forward to Dragon Con every year. It is a giant party. There is so much going on. Artists, writers, panels, uh, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, but before I go, I want to bring back my boys, Patrick, Rob. Oh, and make sure that we... All the props. Make sure we get in everything that we need to... Talk about as we're wrapping out our week. Uh, yes, this um, Friday, Andrews Air Force Base, again, my charity organization, Cost Love, Cost is Love. working with Operation Homefront with their Back to School Brigade, where we um, join with the Operation Homefront volunteers as they hand out bags full of school, school supplies to our military families and children. I'll be having all my cosplayers there. So if you're checking That's out this awesome. episode um, and you want to join us, we'd love to have you over at Andrews Air Force Base. What's And uh, I think 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Okay. I'll put it in the events tab that Good you can see and check it out and get it right. Um, but hit me up. We'd love to have some more cosplayers out there. But it should be a great event. And oh, well, I'll let you wind down. But I'll bring about next week's stuff. We're all thinking of you, Liz. Oh, yeah. Get out there and own the shit out of Vegas. And thank you so much for my birthday shout out last week. That was fun. Yeah. Thank you, too. But you're right here. Oh, Liz no is worries. <laughs> we love Our video this. is called Face Them. And I don't know if you can view it. I think the festival is actually like uh, the, the world premiere. Of yeah, it. yeah. They're running the film circuit before they can bring it out okay. to the rest yeah. of the world. She's got a Facebook. Uh, set up Liz I think has 14,000 followers anyway on a professional page but if for She's whatever fancy. reason you aren't following that go look it up because we all believe in her and hell's bells she's flying across the country because she's getting recognized uh, at she's this a badass that's pretty awesome on the that reminds me if you saw from last week's episode my upcoming web series mm -hmm. me back into the acting game check out the lightworkers that's premiere that episode was. of the new web series it's like 13 episodes is coming up soon. I don't know that date offhand either, so um, I'll probably share that trailer again so you can check it out. But uh, I'm there as the character by the name of Ananias, the original Lightworker. We're kind of like superheroes. Oh, so you'll want to check that out. And since Brandy's gonna be gone and Liz is gonna be gone, Rob and I are gonna hold down the fort. Fucking sausage party. <laughs> I got a break. It is gonna be a straight sausage party because. So and I'm missing this. The guest that we're gonna have on, um, good friend of the show, he's coming back, but he's also part of an amazing band. Um, called the Monday Mistress. They're actually going to be playing at the Jam and Java on September 1st. So they'll be on to promote that show oh. um, on September 1st. But we'll have Joe Carabello nice. um, on. Maker. He's the lead singer and guitarist, as well as the drummer, uh, Mike Argo. So Mike and Joe will be on the show, That's cool. um, hyping up their set uh, at Jam and Java September 1st. Um, check them out, Monday Mistress. They're also dropping yeah. their newest album. We'll hopefully have some of their music on the show and oh, probably awesome. show one of their videos. And as well as Joe is a beyond just being an amazing drummer and singer, he also runs Curl Studio with Carolyn Bolevsky. He's a filmmaker in the area. He was actually at the Charlottesville event taping for cool. another uh, mm. show. 
So he will probably he's, come bring us some of his point of view yeah, on he's that. He's done the Awesome Con commercials for years, yes, he's, doesn't he? Yes, he's an amazing filmmaker. Starring Hand Pan. Also comic creator. Well, shout out Hand Pan. But good people. Joe's been on the show several times. He's a good friend of mine. And uh, they'll be on Monday Mistress. Awesome. Well, guys, don't burn down the place while we're gone. Let the dogs out. Make sure you're feeding yourself. Lock the doors at night. And uh, it's directed towards you on that one. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, it's directed towards me too. I can't. I'm not gonna. I can't place. let y'all go without making sure that you're okay. Yes, ma'am. All mm. right. Thank you. Well, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this week's episode. Have a great week. See you next week. Like, share, subscribe, follow at the NRW. <laughs> hey, do it. Do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so like, I guess I'll just need a new one. And I was just like, why are you going to do it? I was like, I really do need a new fall. <laughs> I've just been saying, I'm getting to the place for cars, spend money on that, spend money on my bike, do other things, and then my phone's last. Well, if it dies, then it wouldn't be. <laughs> I backed up all my photos yesterday, <laughs> just in case.